Well, it's a blessing um, to have uh, Dr. Amy and Linda Henson with us today. Um, I uh, was a student. He was my professor at North Point. And uh, when I met him before I was a student, I used to come to the school and he was uh, teaching there. He's been a missionary. Let him share about his uh, missionary work around the world. And uh, these are uh, two of God's gems. Yes. God's mm. used around the world. And I just thank God that they're here with us this morning. And my reason for asking them to come was selfish. Because <laughs> uh, yep. I know that they move in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, I wanted to see people fill the Holy Ghost Amen. here. Amen. The Holy Amen. Ghost. You can feel the rumblings of revival coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God's doing a work here. Yeah. And it's not about one or two people, it's about the body. Yes. The yeah. And Jesus is here. So, so Dr. Hansen, come to your liberty. Come and share the gospel with us. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing I know about Brother Shirley is that he's always dancing on the inside. <laughs> so I always, I always tell my brother, I, when I see him at school, I, I say, well, now, I'm going to dance for the both of us yep. until, until the Lord heals you and you can do the same. So it's, yeah. well, and, and so, but, but you know, we'll all be doing that in heaven. Yes. Yes. So you need to start practicing that. <laughs> um, my wife and partner in ministry for 53 years, wow. 54. Linda, would you stand? Would you? Uh, also, I'd like to ask you to, during your prayer time this week, uh, our daughter uh, and her husband, work related, will be going um, visiting um, the, uh, Iraq, uh, Baghdad, in Baghdad. To their you know, their visit is work related, but it's uh, still a very dangerous place. In fact, they had the uh, worst bombing uh, terrorist attack in Baghdad uh, since 2003, just this past week. So when you're when you're doing the first time, I would appreciate if you would lift up uh, uh, my daughter and her husband that are there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they will be going, uh, they'll be leaving tomorrow night in the night. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that really, you know, yeah, I think your pastor is just right, right on target. Get ready for revival because, because I, I want to say the, the presence of the kingdom of God, glory is here. Amen. Amen. When you worship, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that, and I, I praise you, you are a light. Now, I'm not. I don't know what's going on around you directly, <laughs> but I can tell you that it represents, for the most part, darkness. Mm -hmm. And you are the light. I mean, you're just a, a, you're a little Assemblies of God church just right in this little neighborhood of Revere. But I tell you what, you never know how God is going to uh, use this place. Because people, the, the human spirit, mm -hmm. even... Even the fallen human spirit is attracted to the glory of God. Yes. Uh, now we know that the redeemed human spirit is attracted to God. You know, uh, and the presence of God's glory is here and is going to ever expand. And uh, uh, and, and just and that's going to be the drawing radiation uh, to this place. People are going to be coming in and. And the, 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 maybe a lot of people that are not used to the biblical worship that, that you provide. And, and so it'll take you a while. I mean, I'll never forget being raised in a mainline denominational pastor. Uh, I'm being raised in a mainline denominational church. I mean, we never moved our feet, you know. <laughs> And even if you, you, had to, you had to be careful, even yep. if you were sitting and there was a real good song going on and you started tapping, you, know, you had to be careful for that. You know, you could get in trouble even for that. And uh, no, I mean, no lifting of the arms, no shouting the glory of God. It's just very quiet, you know. And, 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 uh, believe me, I, I have my quiet moments too. I really do. But, but uh, those are, those are, 
our, our private times and personal times. And so a lot of people think, well, that Brother Henson, he just, you know, all he knows how to do is be animated when it comes to work. No, I have my times of practice. Yes. But you know what? The church is so focused on silence and, uh, and lack of animation that we idolized it. Come on. So much so that we would all, even sometimes we can call them, we'd still make good Catholics. You know? <laughs> and unless those Catholics are baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've seen, yeah. I've seen some Catholics get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they're, they're as lively as any, yeah. as any Pentecostal, okay? <laughs> yeah. But it, it takes that touch from the Lord. Yeah. Uh, or, or sometimes, I, 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 I share this with the students, mainly with the undergraduate, but uh, in teaching, it, 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 sometimes our worship, we look like little Buddhists. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and that uh, that if you and, and again, I, I understand. I've read the Bible a few times, and so I understand that there there are always those moments of silence and the power of the silence when you enter into the glory of God and the presence of God. But biblical worship is primarily totally verbal, totally dynamic, wow. totally animated. The Psalms came out of the Tabernacle of David, and they're all about it. And so would, David would get up every morning, and I, and, I, and I could just see David when he entered in before the Ark of the Covenant, because that represented the very presence of God, because that's where the glory of God, the Shekinah, they call it, was yes. over the, the, the mercy seat, yes. over the Ark of the Covenant. And the glory of God radiated from that. Now, the tabernacle of David was the only place where the ark was visible to every believer, okay? In the tabernacle of Moses, only the high priest got to see the ark of the covenant once a year, okay? But in the tabernacle of David that existed for 40 years during uh, uh, the time of David, it was a place where the people uh, were able, that they understood, because it, it were opposed to the tabernacle of Moses where there was three tents, and the last tent was where the, the, the high priest only could go in once a year. But the tabernacle of David was one tent. Oh, yeah. and you can read that all in Scripture and Chronicles and Kings and, and Samuel. But, and, and so uh, David, David lived right across the street. His palace was, was right across from Mount Zion. And where that tabernacle of David was, where he established it just for the Ark of the Covenant. And he understood that. Man, he didn't get, when he went before the Ark of the Covenant, I just sort of envisioned David. We, we, we know we have biblical pictures of that. When he entered into the tabernacle of David, I could just see him getting ready as he crossed the street from, from his huge palace and went into that one single tent where the Ark of the Covenant was. I could just see David getting ready. You know, let me wait to get over there <laughs> and just to worship the Lord. And by the way, biblical worship is what you do with spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Okay? Biblical worship is spirit, soul, and body. It has to begin with the spirit, but then it radiates out to the soulish man, the emotions, the mind, and the will, and then it explodes in, through the body. Yeah. That's what biblical worship is. It is a bodily e explosion of what is on the inside of the spirit. Now, I've got to be careful here. I'm, uh, this is not even my theme today, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but but it, it, it is related because it's the, the uh, you know what set me free to worship was being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. And that's really my, my, my sharing today. I'm going to give you a little yes. bit of my testimony. Yes. Is that I, I was saved at the age of 11. Wow. Oh, yeah. Started to preach when I was 16 years oh, old. Wow. And uh, I started my, my first student pastor when I was 19 years old. And uh, so, but it was, I was 33 years old before I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because you see, I, I was taught not to expect anymore. I was taught that when you got saved, that was it. Don't expect any more manifestations or miracles of God or transformation. Just, you know, just, just be happy with, you know. And so I, that's, I followed my teachers. That's why I was raised. And so we were taught against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ooh. And, and that, believe me, my feet 
were just as glued to the floor as anybody else's. My hands were cemented to my side. My voice was muffled wow. when it came to praise and worship. Wow. For all those years, I tell you, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. so I do not understand people who are baptized in the Holy Spirit and don't know how to express it. I don't understand that. We are, praise God, we are Pentecostal here. Yes, yes. Your pastor has led you in this way. Amen? Yes. But I walk into a lot of Pentecostal churches and it's almost like they want to be Baptist. You know? I got, praise God, I was raised a Baptist. I praise God for my Baptist heritage. I was, pray, I was raised to love the Bible as the Word of God. Yes. That's why I read it once through from giver to giver every year. In fact, I'll finish it in eight to nine months sometimes, okay? And start on a new translation for the same translation again. So, uh, so the, 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 word, the Word of God, we, it, it takes the Spirit to bring the revelation, the true nature of the Word of God. And that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. Now, if you're Pentecostal and you've been raised in a Pentecostal church, and you've been asking God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for years, and you've never received it with, with the manifestation of speaking in other tongues. Yes, yes. I just want to share with you that Thank when you Lord. got Thank saved, you. the Holy Spirit became yes. resident on the inside. Yes. The yes. baptism, I think sometimes we explain it uh, in, in a way that's not, uh, that, that confuses people. What I believe the Bible teaches is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the release uh, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the release. Of, you receive the Holy Spirit. It flows into you when you accept Jesus. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the explosion, the outward explosion, the outward release, the little fanning of that Spirit that's in on and so yes. many times people are trying to beg God to give them something that God has. When, when, G, when you got saved, yes. Jesus implanted in you that spiritual Amen. language. Wow. But it's just that people don't know to release it. That's right. Now, in my case, I was taught against it. I was taught, don't you dare even gather with those tongue talkers and those uh, people who speak in, in other tongues. They are weird. Yeah. And they are. And in some of would say they are. They are uh, even of the devil, no. okay? Wow. And, 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 so, and, and then, and for the most part, most of them were cessationists in their theology. That is, they believed in all that, uh, all the work of the Holy Spirit ceased after the Bible was translated. Okay? I mean, uh, I mean, it, it's, you know, so the power of the Word can only be understood by the Holy Spirit. Right. So I only begin... Do you know that I began within the first year after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 33 years old? I've been a pastor wow. since I was 19. Been preaching since I was 16. But I had been taught against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I knew all the arguments. I mean, I was trained at the at the bachelor's level, the master's level, the graduate level, uh, how to how to, to uh, come against those the, those people that believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues, those Pentecostals as we call them. You know, those people who only had churches across you know on the other side of town. You know, uh, and uh, uh, and that you didn't dare get near. You know, because something might jump on you. You know. <laughs> You know, when I was 33 years old, something jumped on me, you know. But, but, or rather, I jumped into something. It's called the river, amen. And, and so, praise God. That, that, uh, I, so you see, I was raised to, to be on guard and I'm raised against the Pentecostal message and speaking wow. in other tongues and all against wow. the truth. I was raised, I mean, man, I was entrenched in it. So that when I was first witness to about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I had all the arguments. I had been trained in university. I had been trained at the seminary level. I had been trained at the graduate level. I had all the arguments. Until one day I just began to realize that there was an empty spot. Yes. And that something needed to be released in me that was not yeah. being released. The Holy Spirit on the inside didn't know I didn't know what to do with it, you know. And, and so until I got baptized the Holy Spirit. And then, you see, then that's when the river really begins to flow. Okay. Now, uh, okay. uh, I, I don't want to be guilty of being one of those preachers, I, you know, and I am many times guilt, guilty of, of preaching a whole sermon and then getting to the text. Okay, so I, I don't want to do that this morning, okay? But I want you to turn with me 
to um, uh, and go, go ahead and put up the first one, uh, the first, um, yeah. Okay, it's getting beyond my name. There we go. The, 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 uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. The Spirit and Fire, okay. Let's turn to Matthew 3.11. Now, Luke 3.16 says basically the same thing, okay. But we'll read from Matthew 3.11. And I'm reading from the Amplified because I love the Amplified. It will give you many uh, Greek and Hebrew synonyms along with the English verbs. And I just happen to like that. Um, now, it makes it a little longer to read the Bible through from Kibber to Kibber when you're reading the Amplified. I've got a few extra words, but I, I, I still love it. Okay, Matthew 3, 11. And believe me, I read this verse hundreds of times and didn't understand it until after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spoken other yes. times at the age of 33. Mm -hmm. Now, if any of you are wondering how long ago that was, I'm 75 now. Oh, so, wow. so you, you know, I've had a few years, basically I've had more years of preaching the message of Pentecost than I, than I had before. Thank you, okay? Jesus. Thank you, and, uh, uh, and, and praise God that when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, in the release of the Holy Spirit, with that new language of the Spirit, you, you, uh, Matthew and Luke calls it the manifestation of fire. Luke calls it the same thing in Acts 2. Okay? So uh, Matthew 3.11, and, and basically uh, John the Baptist is speaking, and he says, Now I came, uh, and I come to baptize you in water. But he says, There's coming one after me, and I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. That was the trademark of what a slave did for his master. He carried his sandals, okay? And John says, I'm not even worthy. The one that I'm about to baptize uh, I, uh, in, in water, uh, uh, and the, the, the water that I've been baptizing you in, he, but he's going to come, and he's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, and, and so Luke says the same thing, uh, and, and so we know that Luke reiterates that, that whole phenomenon when uh, in Acts 2, he helps us to understand what the, that, what the spirit and fire was all about, because that's what tongues is. It, it, it is the manifestation, the demonstration of the very presence of God. Fire is always uh, used, or, or most of the time used, as the very presence of God. So the thing of it is that we have to do with in our response to this Holy Spirit and fire. I mean, it is a manifest presence, okay? It is not just something. Uh, when when John, uh, John says he'll baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire, okay, he, he's, he's, he's trying to get us ready for something, okay? That's, that's a whole new phenomenon that the world, even the Jews, have never seen, okay? But there's a... But the unfortunate thing is, is that there were wonderful pictures and types and shadows of that reality in the Old Testament. Now, our response to the Holy Spirit and fire is that, first of all, it needs to be ignited. That fire has to be ignited. Nothing can happen until that fire is ignited. You get saved. You get born again. You invite Jesus into your life. And the Holy Spirit comes and he lights a little pilot light. And, then, and, and within the spirit, within the heart, okay? So, in that pilot light, now here's where, here's where I was. I had that pilot light from the time I was 11 years old. But at the age of 33, somebody came along and turned up the thermostat. And you know what happened then? Man, that, that, that little bit of fire in, in the pilot light, whoo! And that, that's the only way to heat water. Yes. Okay? Yes. You're not going to get good, warm, hot bath water unless, you, unless that thermostat turns. Or you're not going to have the heat, okay, or warm, say warm in the winter, without turning up the thermostat so that that little pilot light can do what the pilot light, the pilot light's not supposed to do what the, when, you, when you turn up the thermostat. It's just there to kick in. <laughs> it's there to kick in the rest of the fire. Amen. So that, that's the difference between the, the amount of fire that you have when you get saved. The Spirit's there. 
A little pilot like it, but I but I'll tell you what, without the baptism of the Holy Light of, of the Holy Spirit, that pilot light gets to flickering sometimes. Yes. Yes. You know? Uh, maybe a drip of water will come out. Oh. So it, it'll flicker again. But man, when that thermostat's turned up, when that fire goes all around. Right. And now we're gonna put it out. Yeah. Amen. So so that's the that's the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I was taught against it for all the years. I was taught in Sunday school in the mainline denominational church. I was taught at, at the, uh, uh, Bible University, Oakland City University, at Christian University. I uh, got my bachelor's degree. Uh, my major was ministry. And, and, and so, uh, and then I went off to seminary. Three, three years. A little master's degree. I graduated after that. Every day that I was in, for eight years in all those theological training schools, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if it was ever mentioned, it was put down. It was, you know, they just, they just eradicated it right off the spiritual map. Okay. And so I was happy with that because I was dead. And the people of my pastor were dead. We were a happy bunch. Okay? They didn't want it anymore. I didn't want it anymore. And they weren't going to get it anymore from me. So that's what happened with me. Until I got back from it. That ruined me in the mainline denomination. It just spoiled, you know, and, and so I, I should have seen the handwriting on the wall right, right from the get go. But, but you know, so here's the thing. I learned more. The Holy Spirit, after being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, I, the Holy Spirit taught me more about the Word of God That's true. than I had learned. I mean, folks, I studied it from the commentaries, the concordances, the Bible dictionaries, the commentaries, the, 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 the Greek, the Hebrew. I studied it from, I mean, you can't. Yeah. For eight years, okay? But in one year after I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit taught me wow. more yeah. about the Word of God. Yeah. I'm not against education. It, it's what I is. It's what I do, okay? I'm not against education. But I tell you what I am against. That is theological, big yes. word, theological education that misses out on the power of the Spirit. Yes, and you know what? Even we as Pentecostal, even some of our school, mm -hmm. I mean, we're reaching the point where some of the, some uh, professors are trying to decide whether or not to emphasize the distinctive doctrine that makes it the gospel of the kingdom. Or, the, or if you want to use the Pentecostal message, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but the Holy Spirit taught me more Amen. Uh, in, in one year. Hallelujah. Not only, now, now this is even more important. It taught me more in one year than I learned eight years of theological education. But the, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit taught me more than one year about who Jesus is. Yes. Now, I love Jesus from the time I was 11 years old. I got saved. I was, I was broken hearted because I knew I was ready to be water baptized, but my family said, no, you're too young. <laughs> you know what? If you're, if you're too young to get saved, then, then, then you're too young to get baptized in water. But, if you're, <laughs> but, but to me, if you're old enough to get saved, you're old enough to get water baptized. My little heart, my little redeemed heart in me said, you know, I, I, man, I want to go down into those waters. Amen. Into those burial waters and get and bury this old, yes. this old Adam. Yes. Yes. Why would I want to bury it? Because it's dead. Amen. That's what you do. If there's something dead, what do you do? You bury it. Yes. Many people, many Pentecostal say that water baptism is a is a is a just something that you 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 might want to do, or it's an option. Let me tell you. It's not an option for your walk in the Spirit. Water baptism, if you have never been water baptized, you need to bury that old stinking thing that was crucified. 
okay? It's called the old Adam nature. Now, it's dead. Water baptism can't kill the old Adam nature. Only the cross can do that. That's right. you know, penetrates that, that old Adam nature and stabs it to death. Okay? Oh, yeah. Just, you know, and so only, only repentance and faith in Jesus can do that. Right. What you, you, if you don't do that first, you can go down into water baptism a hundred times, go in wet, or we're coming <laughs> <laughs> go in uh, dry and come out wet and that's all that happens okay but it but if you're a born again believer it is not an option biblically okay Amen. now now and so uh, it may be an option culturally but it's not an option biblically oh, but the other thing is a baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit again began and the great heritage of that uh Go ahead, I, I just want to really quick, because I, to give you a very quick, and this is the teacher in me, uh, there, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Old Testament, uh, in, in uh, uh, Leviticus 6, every, uh, the pictures of the fire in the Old Testament are pictures and shadows of the reality of the baptism of the Holy Spirit by the fire of the Holy Spirit, okay, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Uh, there, uh, and, and, uh, uh, uh Moses writes in, in the book of Leviticus uh, twice in, in verse 12 and also in verse 13. He says, don't let the fire go out. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so he was talking about at, at, the, uh, at the temple and at the tabernacle of Moses. Don't let the fire go out. What was he talking about? He was talking about the presence of God. The living, vibrating, radiating, empowering presence of God. Don't let it go out. Now, and so the fire of his presence on the altar of burnt offerings. Okay. Uh, to me, the altar of burnt offerings is a beautiful picture, the uh, Old Testament picture of the cross. Okay. It's where Jesus, because the burnt offering out of the five offerings, the burnt offering was only where the whole offering was burned to a cinder. It's, uh, representing that 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 uh, sacrifice that gave its all. <laughs> Nothing remained. Okay. And so that's what Jesus is on the cross. Okay, now, uh, to the next verse, though, at Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy passage, Deuteronomy 4, 11 and 12, uh, I'd like you to write these down, and I'm giving reference to them, but I want you to go back and read, because this, this especially is a very important passage relating to the spirit of fire, because it is the fire of God's manifest presence in Sinai. Some people have called this the Sinai Pentecost. Now, I had a friend who's kind of gone uh, 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 overboard. It's almost like he's become more Jewish than he has Christian. We, we led them to the Lord and the baptism of the Spirit. But somewhere along the line, he began, and I believe we need to support Israel. We, we uh, love Israel, pray for Israel, bless Israel, do everything. Because we are, we're twins, okay? Uh, but, but. We're not to come under the bondage of the Old Testament, okay? The whole Old Testament, according to Hebrews and the New Testament, everything in the Old Testament is a picture and a type and a shadow. The New Testament is the reality, okay? And so, but what happens is that sometimes people, when they get so entrenched in that, it's almost like they pick up again. By the way, people in, in, in the church at Rome and the church in Galatia yes. did that yes. very same yes. thing. Yes. They went back and they picked up the bondage that they had left, okay? And so that is, Christians can do that today as well. And, uh, 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 and so this is the, and then my, my friend, when we were celebrating Pentecost, the New Testament Pentecost, which, rep which is represented on Zion, okay? New Testament Pentecost is represented as Mount Zion, according to the book of Hebrews. Uh, Mount Sinai, okay, represents the Old Covenant, but it was, uh, uh, but it was, they say, historically, uh, took place, uh, this fire in the presence of God took place on Mount Sinai uh, on the day of Pentecost. And so it represents the Old Testament Pentecost, where the very presence of God, I mean, it was so strong and so great that the people, you know, I mean, they, they were scared to death, okay? I, I wish we had a little more uh, awe uh, and respect and, and uh, fear of God in that way. Uh, but when you saw that fiery mountain, okay, the fire filled that mountain, Mount Sinai, 
uh, and represented it. Uh, the, the, the Pentecost on Sinai was pointing to the Pentecost that would take place in Acts 2 on uh, uh, Mount Zion. Okay? But my friend who got, who got so wrapped up in, in Jewish theology and almost, uh, uh, almost has gone back to being poor Judy, uh, uh, Judaic than, than he is a Christian. Uh, but, but he says, well, you, you're worshiping uh, uh, God on the day of Pentecost, but I haven't heard you say anything about that was 3,000 years ago, okay? What we celebrate is Pentecost, uh, uh, that, that uh, Jesus' redemption, for okay. instance, okay? But anyway, but that is a beautiful picture type. Okay, next verse. Now, here is the uh, uh, First Kings 18. Uh, I mean, this, I, I have several sermons just on this text, okay? Uh, and and I, I'll, I'll, I'll not get on any one of those, but just I want to say the fire of God's supernatural triumph over every counterfeit demon. Now, now this is very important. This is the this is what I call the, prof, the, the prophetic announcement of Acts 2. Okay? All the way back in Acts King, you remember the the, uh, uh, the prophets and prophecies of Baal and Asheroth, you know, gathered together all of them. And you know, and there's one man, Elijah, okay? Oh, yeah. and, you know, but he has an amazing verse Right there in, in uh, uh, verse 24. Uh, and he says, and he tells, he says, okay, now this is what we're going to do. All you uh, be, uh, priests and priestesses of Baal and Asherah, you, you uh, uh, do all, you do your thing, do whatever you feel like you need to do, okay, to call down uh, your God uh, and your counterfeit God. And then he said, uh, uh, then I'm, I'm going to just pray. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this is what he said. He said, and the God who answers by fire. He is God. Okay, praise God. You don't have to wait for so many years. From the time I was eleven to the time I was thirty-three years old, I had I was taught to I had to wait around. Okay, I had to wait around for that that empowerment of the Spirit. Okay, uh, and so. Uh, <clears throat> I was, I was a good boy, okay? I wanted to be a good a good little church boy. I wanted to follow what my teacher said. But it, it, it kept the, me from entering into the fullness of God and of God's Spirit. And so if the God of Acts 2 lets us know that God is the one, that Jesus is the one who answers by fire. He's the real thing. And that all these other gods and goddesses, uh, that we're surrounded by in our in our Western culture, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got we've got as many demons and as as many false gods in America as as you do in Africa, Asia, or any place else. Okay, uh, we've been around the world. Believe me, in some ways our demons are a little more are a little stronger. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and because they look so much. For example, religion. Come on. Religion looks so much like. The real thing, spirituality, that we confuse the two. Okay, and and so, but but uh, the traditions of men and religiosity, they are very very strong principalities. Uh, in fact, Jesus made the statement. He said, "The only thing that can block the power of God or the Word of God is what your traditions." Wow. Wow. He said, oh, he, he said you, in fact, he said to the Pharisees, it, your, your traditions have made known and void my word. Wow. And, and, and so religion has that kind of power. That, that, uh, and so that's why we must never become religious. Be on fire of the Spirit. Amen. Because that's what this world is. That's what this community is. And yes, you may be small right now, yeah. and I don't. But I don't care if, if how get big you get. It doesn't matter whatever you are, whatever size you are. Keep the fire of the spirit. Yes. Thank you, Pastor, and and you and your wife yeah. for for allowing that yeah. presence of, of the spirit and fire yes. in this house of worship. Yeah. Praise God. You are believe it because the presence of God's glory as you worship that more than anything else is going to manifest the glory of God that is going to draw people in so keep that up also I encourage you you have great power in spiritual warfare 
when you in the, when you began to say if you need to do this for your family if you're not yes. for lost loved ones people co coworkers we have become so totally defensive in our faith even as Pentecostals yes. now I spend more time than anything just worshiping God but I but I'm called upon according to the to the Apostle Paul to to the, our fight is not with flesh and blood, but it's with powers and principalities, hosts of spiritual wickedness, and world rulers of darkness in the heavens. You know how those dudes' power get broken? Well, I got news for you. They were already broken at the cross. Yes. The Colossians 2 says that Jesus stripped them. Woo! He stripped them of their authority and power. When did he do it? At the cross. Now, he announced it as he was ascending on high because they hadn't gotten the message apparently, okay? But, so he stopped along the way and let them know that they had been defeated just, just in case they had missed it. And, and so all the power. Now, those are the powers that keep people's, people, uh, people's hearts in spiritual blindness. The powers and principalities hosts of spiritual wickedness, world rulers of darkness in the heavenlies. These are the forces of darkness under the, under the direct uh, dispensation, of, under the di direct release of, the, of satanic power over the nations. And when these guys get in power over nations, then, that, then that's why people become spiritually blind. But you and I have the power in the name of Jesus and in the name of the cross where that they have already been defeated, we have the opportunity to enforce that victory. So I, I, a lot of times in, in my praying, uh, you know, it's not just praying, it's, I, uh, that after I worship, because worship is directed to God. You give God the glory that He's due, okay? But also I have those moments where I say, in the name of Jesus, you powers and principalities, you host of spiritual wickedness, you world rulers yes. of darkness yes. over the nations yes. of the earth. I declare that your power was stripped and made null and void at the cross, and I enforce that victory of the cross right now against you. I tell you, keep your hands up. Because we as Pentecostal believers have not been doing our, our spiritual warfare. Yeah. We haven't been telling. You see, the devil needs to be reminded. Yes. He needs to be. That's what you do when you come against those powers and you, and, and you cast those spirits out in the name of Jesus. That's what you're doing. You're reminding the devil that he is already defeated. That the keys of death and hell and the grave have already been stripped from, from his And so that's what but we. We do the enforcing. Yes. But many times, even we Pentecostal believers, is what well, Jesus won the victory of the cross. Yes. 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 No. no, you don't rest in that victory. Man, you put on that armor of God. And you begin to tell on the forces of the art of the darkness where that they have already been defeated at the cross. And now I enforce that victory over you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Okay, pardon me. That's that's just down. Now, get on into the New Testament just real quickly. Uh, Luke twelve forty nine to me is a verse that uh, that has been totally misunderstood uh, because it, Jesus is talking about. He says, He said, Oh, how I wish. He, he said, I'm going to send fire. And he said, Oh, how I wish that it was already kindled. A lot of people look at that verse and they think he's talking about the fire of judgment. Jesus, halfway into his ministry, saw what was going to happen when the Holy Spirit, when he pulled out the Holy Spirit from the church. And, 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 and he foresaw the whole book of Acts. Yes. And, and, uh, uh, and so I, 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 I get to see Jesus look at, oh, wow. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Father. I have come. To, send, to, to spread fire. And, and oh, oh, I, I wish the year and a half was already up so that I could see it. Okay? I wish I was lost. I wish I remember so that I, I could, I, I want uh, to see. Oh, I wish it was already in the kingdom. Fire. Even 
Jesus wanted to do. And so, that's what, to me, that's what Jesus... Um, uh, now, I, I'm sure there are some very solid, sound scholarship that would, that, would, that would not accept that translation. But you just allow... Especially the experts to be wrong. Okay? <laughs> so, the fire of the Spirit is a right on as a demonstration of Christ's compassion. It was, it was a demonstration. The, the Holy Spirit being poured out was a great demonstration of the compassion of Jesus. We oh, talk about, uh, you know, we all use that word love. But the most loving thing that Jesus could do after dying on the cross for us is pouring out the Holy Spirit. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Pouring out the Holy Spirit. Yes. So that the redeemed can be restored yes. and do the restoring. Yes. Yes. We're put here. You're, this church is here. Yeah. It, it is. Uh, you, you, you are the you are the, the leaven of restoration. Come on. Yeah. Now only the redeemed can do that. Okay. And so uh, and so Jesus redeemed you so that you could be restored. And then so that you could restore others. Amen. Okay, okay real quick. Uh, the, the next verse, okay. Uh, uh, the, the fire of Pentecost, the fire of Christ in Parliament for global missions must be received, you know. I didn't understand that for the longest time, like I said, because I thought I had all the Holy Spirit that I was ever going to get. Okay? But, and, I, and I thought that for all those years, even as a pastor. How would you like to be a pastor in the mainline denominational church? And not be baptized in the Holy Spirit, okay? I mean, I tried, you know, and I and, and, and I really believed that if I died, I was going to go to heaven. But I, there was no empowerment in my ministry. There was no empowerment in my worship. There was no empowerment in my spiritual warfare. There was no empowerment in my prayer life. And I was certainly, I never expected any spiritual wonders, okay? Because all that existed only for the first century church. How dare God play a trick like that? Pour out the Spirit and leave it only for the early church. Come on. Praise God! But I don't serve that kind of a God. He says, no, what I did, I am doing. Amen. What you yes. what they have, yes. you have. Yes. Oh, yes. Woo. Woo. And it doesn't have to yes. You may think that the older you get, that that fire will grow dim. It doesn't need to. It doesn't. In fact, it's not supposed to. Okay. It just gives you the right to be a little crazier with it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you get my age, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure some of the younger guys are going to know well, but, he, you know, that's all right. He'll, he'll be gone and buried, you know, we might have to put up with the likes of him. But, you know, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, because I believe that when it's the Holy Spirit in fire, yes, it doesn't. Ooh, okay. Oh, now I'll go on, and, and I'm just, just, just I'm just going to read these. Okay, first the Lord, Paul says to the, the uh, Thessalonian church, the fire in, in man's redeemed spirit that uh, it must not be suppressed. Yes. The way Paul puts it, he says, he says, don't suppress it. Don't suppress it. Um, don't. Uh, uh, don't let it go out. He, and Paul is saying the same thing in 1 Thessalonians that the Levitical priest, that, that Moses said to the Levitical priest, okay? Don't let the fire go out. That's what he said. And also in 1 Timothy 1 6, real quick, uh, the fire of God's presence must be continually fanned. Now, this is the purpose. Remember, I said that when you got saved, I believe Jesus ignites that, that, that uh, pot of the whole fire. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking of tongues, that's the thing. Amen. Oh, I think whatever, every morning when I get up uh, and, and just start praying in tongues, yes. I'm in that way. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yes. Yes. You know what? And that, the thing of that flame wants me to go spend some time in the Word. Yeah. It, 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 sure. it drives me to worship the Lord yes. uh, with my whole spirit, soul, and body. It, it leads me into my responsibility of spiritual warfare. It leads me into the expectation of signs and wonders yes. uh, when His Word is preached. And so, praise God. Praise God. That, 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 it, it has to be continually faith. And, and that's, that's the importance. Now, Many Pentecostals get baptized. I mean, it, it's our distinctive doctrine we have. But you know what happened in many Pentecostal circles? We, we stress the people getting receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which which we should, because no other group is doing that. So that's essential. But 
I've known people that got baptized in the Holy Spirit and they haven't spoken in tongues since then. That is the greatest tragedy. That is a greater tragedy than not receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit because that that is that is the banning of that flame. Man, I tell you, that's what keeps the word. That's what keeps spiritual wonders. That's what keeps worship and warfare. That's what keeps it alive and vibrant. Fanning that flame. Amen. Praying and speak. I tell you what, praise God. The, the beauty of tongues is I can pray in tongues. I can worship in tongues. In fact, half of my worship, when 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 you all are singing the English or whatever, I'm I'm singing I'm singing the spiritual language, okay? Hallelujah. And then the spirit knows just when to move you from worship and warfare. Yes. All those that will work, move you back from warfare in the worship. Yes. 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 The Spirit knows. Yes. The Spirit knows. Yes. 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 And, and so that's the power. We haven't begun to touch the essence and of the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? Yes. That's why, again, it should be something that we that is a part of our warfare, part of our worship every day. Now, finally, in Revelation, the fire of the radiating presence of the glorified Christ. John sees a picture of Jesus. Now, John saw Jesus. John knew what Jesus looked like when he roamed the earth. He looked just like uh, any other man, any other person, okay? Of a, a body, of a spirit, flesh, a, a body, a soul, and, and body of flesh and blood. But then, in his picture of Jesus, he gives us the true picture of, of, of now, the transformation. Because now, uh, and he sees the same Christ that we experience today. He is, and there, uh, the fire, when you look at Jesus in the book of Revelation, in, in that first chapter, uh, John is writing about, man, Jesus is the one, he, <laughs> the fire is just radiating out of his presence, wow. amen? Because it's the Spirit is radiating out of his So it is Jesus, you see, it's not, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking of tongues, uh, is, is not a, is not a different Jesus. Jesus is a baptizer. Hallelujah. Okay? But, it, but, it's, but the, the picture sometimes that we have of Jesus who baptized you in the Holy Spirit is the, the glorified Son of God that looks just like he did. The, the one that Jesus that John saw was, I mean, there was there was fire radiating, shooting out his fingers, out of his face, out of his hair, out of his off his feet, you know, even Lord. his feet were like burnished bronze, you know, Lord. Lord. and uh, so, I mean, it's just white hot, you know, and so, the, 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 the biblical, uh, and, and I did this, I wanted to give you a strong biblical foundation going all the way back, and believe me, I could have used a dozen other verses, but I had to pick and choose, because, because the message, the distinctive message that we have about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, again, where John says, I baptize you in water, but there's going to come one who's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and the fire. So, so that is it's that is what we wow. get when we and it belongs if you've accepted Jesus and that, that light the how the light is on the inside it uh, then believe me that new language of the Spirit has it has been repeated for you but it's time for you to release it yeah. now and, and so it's, uh, faith uh, the tongues is like any other act of faith it starts with God's initiative. Yeah. But it has a human response. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every act of faith is the initial grace of God and the human response. Yes. Right? But we, a lot of people, they say, okay, God, here I am. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to speak now telling you, okay, here I am. Hit me with all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you hit me hard enough, maybe, you know, maybe some, some, some the, the tongues will roll out. Mm -hmm. No, it's a cooperative effort. Yes. You have to get in that place. That's right. Jesus, I thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Worship you, Lord. I worship you. I bind you powers of hell. Yeah. Yeah.
Small 